Nobody truly knows why we are here, some believe they completely have it figured out. Others believe it is all about being successful in every aspect of life itself. Others find no value in everyone's life, only itself, or its kind. Truth is, life is not a game of percentages. If you let someone sway your desire based on the perception they have, then the choice you make won't be about you, it will be about them. Choose from the heart, and you can't go wrong. Some believe only their religion is correct. Some believe only their race deserves to experience God. Some believe only their land is more blessed compared with other areas. Some believe they are competing for God in this thing we call life. People believe God can only love them and hate everything else. Life is not a competition. The energy we put into something shouldn't involve or revolve only around the destruction of something else in the process. If 50% of people lose in a non-competitive game, everyone loses. Life isn't a competition, God's love isn't a competition. If it were it would be a non-competitive game, where majority wins every time. 50% is a loss, 80% is a loss, 20% is a loss. God isn't saving a percentage of people. In fact God isn't a percentile energy. His energy isn't directed by percentages of certain things and people. Associating God with a percentage is an insult to his true nature, his power and abilities. Religion limits God with their percentages and perspectives and their perspective evolution of who and what God is, his plans, and his nature. We can't continue to divide God's love and associating it only to a particular percentage of people, places, or things. God's love and glory can't be divided by any means. We are not in competition for the right religion, race, and area. None of it matters it doesn't make you greater than anyone. You should want the best for everything regardless of our differences. What divides us fleshly, doesn't divide us spiritually. Your spirit, soul, essence is a frequency of energy and matter. Your spirit has no color, religion, or class. When God tests the value of your spirit, it will not revolve around your race or religion. Testing of spirits isn't even about intelligence. God will test your spirit by experience, everyone's experiences are different, some people's life are perfect, but their spirit will still be tested. Some people know the Bible from start to finish, but it doesn't mean your spirit is right, it will still be tested. A book has no soul or spirit. You do. God will test your experiences, not your religion. It's like people believe God is testing religions or holding a competition of what's the best religion, or who has the most people. Some behave as if their race is better than the next, like God is making us compete for something, may the best race wins. The thing is this isn't a competition. If you ever find yourself competing in a non-competitive event, always remember majority wins. If someone makes a non-competitive situation a competition, it would mean in that type of situation, higher numbers are higher chances of accomplishment, lower numbers would mean lower chances of actually accomplishing something from nothing. Religion is a experience. Your race contributes to your experience. Your gender will define your experience. Your family, job, are all experiences used to test your spirit. None of these things will make your experience better than anyone else's, in fact your spirit will be tested more, because with great wealth, there will be a great test of your spirit. Experience is neither right or wrong, because wisdom is gained. Those who are able to take wisdom's instruction understands, there is wisdom in a good situation, and a bad situation. The secret is being thankful for them both. Taking the good, accept the bad, be grateful for it all. That is true peace. That is wisdom. The human experience isn't only about religion, race, gender, etc. It's just an experience, good, bad, ugly, pretty, happy, sad, peaceful, chaotic, joy, pain,
Black, White, Indian, Muslims, African, Asian, Irish, English. We are all made to experience life differently, because there is no value in who or what we identify as throughout the experience. God won't care because it doesn't matter. He won't care about the color of your skin or the church you attend. He won't care about the president you like or the country you hate. The God of Israel isn't the God of the universe. The God who only blessed the land of the Jews isn't the God that has created millions of galaxies in this vast universe beyond measures. The God you pray to only loves one set of humans. The God you serve only blesses those with a particular genetic code. The God many believe that plans on killing innocent souls because they don't act and they don't believe in the same ideology that you are affiliated with. The God I pray to is too incredible for me to even type in words. Words cannot describe him. His essence is unlike anything ever imagined. Why would I believe it only resides in religion? Why would I believe God's glory is only found in one race? Your individual experiences brings you to God, not religion. Your experiences with others can bring you closer to understanding God. Religion is an experience. Religion is about people's story from experienced perspective. Your experience shouldn't be placed above others, as if only yours matters, or only yours is the truth. With experience, there is no right or wrong, high or low, happy or sad, wealthy or poor. Black or white, experience isn't limited by age, race, gender, religion. Because all of that matters, there is no right or wrong. Because experience can be learned from being right and wrong in any situation, happy or sad from any circumstance, high or low emotional experience. Wisdom is in birth. Wisdom is in death. Experience is gained from everything. It shouldn't be limited by anything. If you only believe your religion matters, and to those who believe only your race is chosen, while others aren't, and to the many of you believe you will witness others' pain, destruction, torture, with hell, or whatever you believe they deserve, picture yourself being wrong. What's your next move? It's not wise to guess the outcome of any situation without the absolute truth. Because you have to use only facts to determine the outcome. When determining the outcome of a situation, truth is considered to hold the most leverage. Actual proof, the truth matters. That's why it's important to know who people were, what things really means, how things really happened. That's why I talk about the races of these people, because that is the actual truth. The truth is most of these people were black. The truth of the color doesn't mean that color only matters. If you came home early from an event, you walked in and witnessed someone committing a crime. You would immediately report the crime to law enforcement. When they arrive at your house for information about the criminal, the first important question will always be that person's race: white, black, Mexican, Arab, Asian. That is so important if you truly want the criminal from off the streets. You would have to provide the most accurate description of the person, because if you don't, it's possible they could arrest the wrong person, and then the criminal will more than likely commit another crime. It is important for you to know these people' actual race, because it's beneficial to the truth. Anyone could claim to be someone or something else. It's best to know facts. Eve was a black woman. It's important because it literally changes everything we've been taught. It changes the characters, the setting, the time, and the truth. Changing the race of the people in the Bible changes the truth, and people wonder why things are so bad. It's because you built a country off the backs of Egyptian folklore. Moses was definitely a black man. There is no doubt about it. He most definitely married a black woman named Zipporah. Eve was a black woman, a dark, beautiful essence of beauty. Black women are the only human that possesses the Eve gene. Enoch was most definitely black. His son, who was Noah's father, was definitely black. I've heard people say black people are cursed. If we are, then you are too. You follow nothing but black people. King David's mother is a black woman. 
King David's wife Bathsheba was a black woman. King Solomon was a black man, Queen Sheba was a black woman. I never really paid attention to the similarities King David's wife and Queen Sheba's name until now. Moses's wife Zipporah helped the tribes of Egypt survive in the desert. Almost all the people in the Bible that had a lasting impression were black. Them being black doesn't make us chosen. It just means truth is, during the time all this took place. From Adam and Eve, to Enoch and Noah, from Moses, to Zipporah, to King David, and King Solomon. Queen Sheba, and more than likely Jesus, being a descendant of David. He's more than likely a black man. I want people to realize, the fact that people didn't acknowledge their skin color doesn't mean it's not important. If you want God to move like he did with Moses, and part the sea, you would have to know who Moses really was, to understand the God he believed in. People say things like God never changes, if he doesn't, then these people's skin color doesn't change either. Their blackness plays a huge role in why he used them. Not because they were chosen, it's because during that particular time period, the first humans were black. Time changes, but history doesn't. Imagine the end is near, you are getting prepared to meet God in heaven. Before you make that final step, you are faced with a great testing of spirit. You are faced with the reality of your religion. That reality is there are hundreds of religions all claiming the same thing. They all had a Jesus, a Mary, and a jealous God, and a particular group of chosen people. Envision yourself standing in front of all the different religions, trying to determine which one is correct in their interpretation of God and the kingdom of heaven. Most people would follow the leader, meaning they would go with the religion that has the most following, with the greater reach. Some people will follow their own, they believe only their race has the absolute best perception of God. And only their race is chosen by God. A multitude will be led by fear. The fear of hell, so that fear will control their decision. They also assume everything else is the devil, so their whole perspective is based of uncertainty. The other half believe through separation, division, and deprivation they will automatically be saved so they probably wouldn't even go to the event and pick a religion or God because they assume they will be picked. They assume God is picking the best and they themselves believe they're one of those honored people. Then you all of a sudden see something different, you see particular people in that lineup of gods and religions. They have no particular perception, they aren't swayed by anything. In fact they really aren't saying much about why you should consider believing in their God or their beliefs. These people look and act differently than the other religions. Their aura is bright, they have no particular select race, so the group is made up of every race known to mankind. These people glow, without saying much. You would wonder who they are, what they believe in. But they won't explain it, because they are the living example. These people won't have to sway people to believe them. Their aura and energy will speak for itself. But the most incredible thing about these people, is the fact they're not considered to be a religion. They don't act, and think like any denomination of religion. If it were, their religion would be truth. The religion of truth isn't a religion, is a way of life, it's a essence. When you have truth, you become a beacon of light. God shines a light on truth. When you receive it you will glow. Your frequency will be vibrant. You won't have to prove anything, sway anyone. Your energy will speak for itself. The truth is, knowing the truth about their skin color and acknowledging it is the only way you can be like these people. Their truth is the truth. Changing their truth changes everything. It changes God. These particular people, because of their race, had a particular God. The truth separates you from making the wrong decision and following the wrong thing. The skin color of these people will ultimately determine your perception of truth. Changing the truth and not acknowledging the truth will eventually lead to ignorance and flawed perception. If you want to experience the God of Moses and King David, you would have to know them. Knowing them includes their race.
anyone can claim to be Moses, God, and Jesus. Changing the race would change the God, not acknowledging the race would mean acknowledging the wrong God. Changing the place changes the situation. It is important to know what God you're worshipping.